Okay, let's try. Fourth time we're going to try to do this, and hopefully we'll get through a domino. Um, we're going to show you today how to make these really easy little roses. Um, I've heard them called many different things, and people have been doing them for a very long time. Um, I hesitate to call them a rose because there's so many beautiful florals out there. But for me, these are scribble roses. Um, super easy, and I'm going to show you how quick and easy you can dress something up like a domino. And to do these pins, I start out with a plain old domino like this. And I buy them at Walmart or Target or whoever happens to be having a sale. But at Walmart, you can get a large tin of them. I think there's 144 or something like that in there for $15 or $16. Um, I do not paint the backs of my dominoes. I like the fact that you can see that it's a domino. If that's not your style necessarily, then you can buy wood blanks that you go and um, purchase from like Bear With Us or I'm sure other toll suppliers have them. But I like, I like this and if you, if you were thinking, well, I'm going to go find some old dominoes, be careful about the dominoes, like the black ones that my grandma had that were actually made out of wood, and they have generally dragons and things carved on them. Those are not the best for painting on, unless you want to paint dragons. Otherwise, just get these plain plastic ones like this. So, I get these, and then the other thing that we're going to be using is tissue tape. That's what these are all about. The background that you get on these dominoes, these are not finished ones I'm showing you, um, this vintage looking soft background comes from tissue tape and tissue tape the ones that I like that I have found are Tim Holtz uh, you can find those in the scrapbooking sections in most stores I bought mine at Aaron Brothers Art Mart they happen to have a couple that's where I bought the first ones and then also at Joann's if you go in the scrapbooking Tim Holtz has some really cool stuff um, one, they come many different ways, two in a package, and they're 16 yards on a roll. One roll is enough to do just about a bazillion pins. So if you have a friend who wants to do some too, you might want to maybe split a package and you can actually take this and just put it on something else if you want. Um, it's like a painter's tape. It is a little sticky, but it doesn't leave a residue and it's not going to grab so hard that you can't lift it up and move it. So it's rolled upon itself. So you could take this and roll some on a different thing if you wanted to split up packages and you weren't going to be painting a bazillion pins. The, my favorite is the one called Nostalgic, and that is actually um, a couple different rolls. It is this one here I like this because it has the canceled uh, the postage stamps on it and then it has just words so for me the whole thing is this background it's just getting this soft vintage looking background there so that you don't have to fill a whole pin you can just add a rose or a few roses down in the corner and you're done um, this one again this one I saved it was the very first one that I did and it's actually one of my favorites so I saved this and these are quick, good sellers. Um, I took some to Bunko the other night, and I sold 17 just at Bunko. So if you're looking for something for your craft shows that you can um, do quick and easy, these are great. One of the things that people were asking about is the one that I had done that said chocolate, which is right here. And then I did a cupcake on this side, but you can do whatever. I've done them with cupcakes. I've also done them on some paper mache eggs. Uh, you can go to my Facebook page and see some pictures of that. Um, but I want to stress that... I didn't have a whole roll of the word chocolate. This is my tissue tape, and as you can see right there, finally there's a word chocolate. Oh, it's upside down. There's a word chocolate. So there's a lot of stuff in between, but that's all stuff that you can still use if you just want it for a background, and that's really all we're doing is just giving it a background. So pick and choose what you want. Another one that I have is the music notes um, and these are great music note pins generally are always going to need to be painted side to side unless your music is all over the page and falling off um, and then the other one that came in that particular role was definitions and it has words and some definitions some of them are not necessarily ones that I use so I might tear that little piece off and throw it away but things like imagination journey memory dream those are, those are great ones to put on there, and then you can do whatever you want as far as whether it's flowers or something else. So, first you're going to prep your dominoes. Because they're plastic and they're slippery, 
I actually take um, a light sander and I sand, buff them up a little bit first. Then I lay a whole bunch out on a tray. I have many, many of them um, at one time. I generally work on, try to work on about 30 or 40 at once. Uh, two reasons, they go quick. Second reason is by the time you finish a step on the first one, um, or the last one, then your first one's ready to go back to and do the next step. So after I buff them up, I wipe off the dust, and then I will spray them with a light mist of a matte or satin varnish. Here in San Diego, it's not snowing, so I can go ahead and just run out in the backyard before I go to work, give them a light mist, and then I bring them in um, because I'm not here to smell it, and <laughs> probably the people sleeping still don't like it, but I put them in the studio, and then when I'm home, they're dry and ready to go. The next step is just a base coat. I use DecoArt Americana paints for everything that I'm painting, and light buttermilk is one of my favorite colors. It's one of my favorite background colors because you can change that up a little bit. It's not super bright, but it's not too yellow, so the light buttermilk is great for that. So once you have a coat on here, when you're base coating, this doesn't happen to be my base coating brush, but it's the same size, um, you want to use as big a brush as you can. The bigger the brush, the less the brush strokes. And so then you don't have those little, you know, hills and valleys and, and little things to jump over. So you want to get a, use a big brush, get it on there, make sure you don't have any big, you know, chunky little spots. Go ahead, let that dry. By the time you get to the last one, your first one's ready for a second coat. I do put a little bit of water in my paint when I'm doing my first base coats because then it'll level out a little bit. And so one coat I brush on going one way, then when I come back and do the second coat, I'll go the other way. That way, if you do have any little um, brush marks, that generally they'll level out with each other. Okay, so then you've got your uh, base coat there. Next thing is taking your tape. Um, you're going to take off a piece of wherever you want it. Let me grab something different, actually. Um, for example, here, I want to use this canceled postage mark. So I lay that out on there, and yes, I'm wasting a lot this time because the one that I was demonstrating on first got painted, sorry. Um, so I lay my tape on there, and if you don't get it centered, if you want it centered, and this one I did happen to center, I have a little bit on either side, but you can move it to one side or the other, or you could actually line up more than one, but then you're gonna waste quite a bit. So you get that on there, and if it's not right, it lifts up really easy. Just lift it up, push it back down. Okay. Once you have that on there, the next step is you got to get rid of a little bit of tail. Um, if you lined it absolutely perfectly, I guess it wouldn't matter. But I like this step because it does tighten up the edges for you. And I take an emery board, one of the big fat ones um, that you can get, not a super rough one. And I go in and I just go over the edge of the domino where the tape is and that just cuts off that little tail. And then it also kind of seals it at the same time right there. So you're gonna do that to both sides. Now, if there's a favorite TV show on and you really wanted to watch it and your TV's not where your paint stuff is, this is a good step that you can do or take with you someplace. I will go ahead and lay tape on all of them and then come back and do that. Last night I did some of this sanding stuff while I was watching TV. So then you've got your tape on there on your domino ready to go. The next step is if you're going to do some crackling and mo anybody that knows me knows that I like to crackle, um, you're going to take some more of your light buttermilk and then just lightly go over and you can see it's changing that color a little bit. It is softening it down but it's, it's going to um, lighten up a little bit as it dries. But I just do a light coat, a washed coat of paint over the top of that tape. And the reason I do that is because when you're crackling, crackle works by, by grabbing the paint and then reacting and then it cracks. Well, if there's no paint on the tape, it doesn't really crack there. It just kind of sits there and, it, and it's a little flaky. So I found that if I do that little bit of paint on top, it makes a big difference. So that's what you got there. The next thing that you're going to do, which I actually, you'll pretend that you don't see this right now because the video stopped earlier and I'd already done this. The next thing you're gonna do is actually paint your um, 
roses on there, which I have one right here. I can do that on, sorry. So I just paint a circle. And then if you realize you just painted it directly over the postage mark that you did not want to do that to, you just get a little bit of water on your brush and wipe it off. There you go. Painting sometimes is a lot like cake decorating. It's figuring out how to fix what you screwed up, and that's the beauty of it. You can fix what you screw up. So I'm now flipping it over because I wanted them at the other end. So now I'm going to go ahead and add just some circles in there, and you can see I'm just adding a circle. I usually do like one big butt, big rows, and then I'll throw on a couple extra. You want to work in odd numbers. You don't want it to um, be too symmetrical because if you look at a rose bush, they're generally not that way. So I do a larger one and then a couple small ones. And if you've you had a bigger surface, you could add a couple more. What you want to stay away from, and I find that I end up with this sometimes and then I have to go in and fix it, is like a big one right here and then one here and then here and then you have a big pink Mickey Mouse, which is okay if you throw leaves in between. But so anyway, that's there. There is a little bit of pink still showing where I tried to just wipe off what I screwed up. And actually that's okay because sometimes, just to give it that background, I will go in, pick up some washi color, and just brush in a little bit of color here and there. Just a wash, just a tint. Um, and that's going to end up blending in when it's all done. Okay, so just a little bit of color thrown on there. Okay, so... You have a, this is a Mickey Mousey looking one. So you have a big rose and then a couple little buds right over here. And the next step is, oh, by the way, that pink was Poodle Skirt Pink. That's my favorite rose color. If you like it softer, add some um, white to it. If you want a different color, you can either add some reds to it or whatever you want. Yellow roses are beautiful. Um, then you're going to need a shading color because you're going to need something to um, shade inside of the rose, that little center there, um, the center of the bowl. So I'm using peony pink, and I am just going to, first of all, move these. I am going to float, corner load, and you can see I'm using a, a half-inch angled brush. I always use a half-inch brush to float. I don't care how big or little these are. You need you need brush for the color to float. It needs to go from color and fade out to nothing. And if you use a tiny little brush, there's no, nowhere for it to float. So I'm one of those that needs to see it the way it's supposed to be. Now my float, I want the deepest color towards the bottom of the rose. So I'm just doing like a little C stroke there. Okay. And then another one on the other buds. Sometimes when they're in the center, sometimes I do them towards the top. Okay, you can see it's just a little stroke right there. So I've got that in there. Okay, now while that's sitting, what I also want to do is give it some leaves in between. So again, I'm using a filbert. This is actually a number, like a number four filbert. Um, and I like the filberts because they have that rounded edge at the chisel edge of your brush. So I'm going to load into a little bit of green. This green happens to be foliage green. So I load into my green, but then I'm just going to tip just the corner of it into my peony pink. And I'm going to blend a little bit. If you look at a rose on a rose bush, almost always there is some pink or purple in the leaves. So I'm because these are an easy, quick, sit down and don't think about it, I don't want to go back and do a ton of shading. So I just loaded some of the pink with my green, and I'm just going to pull, set it down, twist and pull, and pull some little leaves like there. And then think about these as filling in where you think you might want to add some um, space to fill in. Like right in here is another good one, so I'm going to set it and pull it. And then... Reload, pick up a tiny bit more of my pink, and I'm going to go in and set and pull that off as on an angle. Okay, don't don't get you know too stressed about it being exact or anything else because I'll tell you what, if you go out there and look at my rose bush, there's all kinds of leaves in there. Some of them are chewed up by bugs. Um, some of them are perfect, but not very many. So just set them down, and if you need to go back and and fix it a little bit, go for it. 
Okay, so that leaf is on there. So while that part is drying, I'm going to go in, pick up some more of my peony pink, and I am going to, and I corner load and then blend on my palette. When we have better pr production and videoing going on here, you'll be able to see that. Um, and then I'm actually going to also float some color around the base of the rose. Okay, I'm just going to, my paint, corner with paint on my brush is right at the bottom of the rose so that my brush is laying up, going up, and that's where the color is going to fade away. So start at the bottom and then just pull along the bottom like that. So then you end up with this. Okay? And then liner brush. You just take your liner brush when you find it. When you know, there it is. And we're going to use some warm white or whatever white you happen to have and my peony pink and I'm really just going to scribble some I actually double load first I take my liner and I happen to be using a 10 aught I like a nice small liner um, and I just dab into each of them you don't want giant globs and I'm going to start scribbling back and forth I start at the top and I just kind of pull you got to have enough paint to do that pull some strokes and I hope you can see I'm just pulling strokes that's all I'm doing is just back and forth I start up towards the top and then pull back around okay that's all it is it's pulling 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 then the the nice thing is I'm gonna go do each rows first real quick and then you come back and you just add lighter or darker where it looks like it needs it. Okay, right there. I try to turn this while I do this one. Start here at the top and I'm pulling around. Okay, and then same thing, little short strokes right there. And I did go ahead and creep over on the other rows because they do overlap on a bush. You don't want a big old gap between them. So here on the big rows, I have it on an angle for me so it's kind of weird, but um, just again, pull, pull, Okay. Now this top one looks a little bit weird to me. It's a little bit too um, foo foo -y weird. So I'm going to pull in my liner and just pull some more. Okay. Now, if you want, I'm going to go in and I'm going to add some a little bit more just straight white. See that there? Some straight white down here. And literally, it is just the tip of my brush. And remember, highlights of any kind, that's where the light's hitting it. Hence the word highlight. Um, so that's going to be more towards the top. So you go ahead and put those in where you think it needs it. And then if you want to go back and add some others, I'm actually going to leave these the way they are right now because those are okay because I'm going to do a couple more things to them. I'm going to pick up my brush, my flat brush, corner load back into my peony, and I'm going to come into the top of the bowl up here at the, I'm sure it's a different name for a flower, but I'm not a botanist, so I don't know what that is, but um, I'm going to come in and from the top into that bowl, I'm going to also add a little bit of color and round it out because you want it to look like the inside. Take that. Same thing here. I'm going to deepen it up a little bit is what I'm going to do. Okay, just like that. Mom, can you go grab burnt umber off my table, please? And then when you realize you forgot a color, you have Mom go get it for you because when we need it, we're not going to have it. Um, okay, like that. And then you look at it and you say, you know what? I want a little bit more and I'm looking at this and going you know what I want a little bit more highlight on this one rose and oops rose over there again remember what I said about fixing it when you screw up so you're just gonna add it where you think you might need it and it's scribble scribble back and forth it's, there's no perfect stroke to this because you just want to give it a basic shape um, even if you go look like at my roses out in my garden um, 
I say garden. I don't have a garden. It's a backyard and there's a really big rose bush back there that's doing great. So I call it a garden even though it's really not. Okay, so now we have burn number paint too. Um, and see, I just went in and added a little bit more, some more light little strokes on those. And they're just back and forth, just the tip of my liner brush. That's all they are. Now, I had mom go get me burnt umber because that's a little bit too pink for me in the center of that rose. Though I will tell you some of mine have very, very deep pinkish centers. But the other thing, if you want a vintagey look, and that seems to be what I tend to go for anyway, um, you can deepen it up a little bit. So I'm taking some burnt umber and I'm going a little bit over, just corner load again. I went over that pink just to, to kind of tone it down a little bit, okay? So the next step is these roses are just kind of hanging out there and they're just plopped on the middle of this background. So what I'm going to do is I'm using desert sand. That is another, again, these are all Americana deco art. Ameri um, the desert sand is a good beige for shading and I love it. So this is going to be done very loosely. I'm going to move things out of the way. Um, very loosely, what I'm doing is, again, corner load, and I'm coming in, and I am just floating loosely. I, I use the word because it is. It's loose. It is not a very precise. Just come in and loosely add some shadows around these roses. So I am going wherever the background on the background around the roses. I'm going around the leaves, around the bowl of the rose, more leaves, okay? The thing with floating, if you're not real familiar with corner loading and floating, is you gotta stay away from the areas that you just did because the wide, wet part of your brush will wipe over things if you try to do intersections and you cross over, you're gonna wipe off what you just did. So you need to be aware of that which is another reason to work on several at once. But I've been doing a lot of them so I can kind of bounce around a little bit and not hit them so much. So this just softens it down so that it's not just, you know, such a stark difference between the background and your roses. And then so that it isn't just now, now you look at the top up here and it's like, oh, wow, look, there it is, postage stamp. So what I'm going to do is take my brush also corner loaded so you can see just the very corner of it. And I blend it on my palette already. And I'm going to now come up and I'm going to just do a float down the edges of this. And it'll carry over enough that then it's not going to be sticking out so much. And then you can take a corner load, blend it really, really well. And you can actually come in and just add a couple little light streaks on it too. Okay. All right. This lighting is terrible. Okay. So there you go. Now we're going to come in and take our liner brush and that little bit of burnt umber that we put out. I'm just going to get some on the tip of my brush and I'm going to come in and I'm going to dot. Just dot, 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 dot 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 and that's little pollen-y things in your rows so just like that you see just dot 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 that's all it is okay like that okay now in case someone's sitting there going why in the heck hasn't she done anything to the back yet I or the edges I don't do the edges till very last um, I get all the top done completely, and I mean completely, completely, and I even varnish the top. Then I go in and I do the edges, okay? Um, or what you can do is you can go ahead and you can go ahead and do the top here, and then when I paint the edges, I'll use, again, a brush that kind of fits there better, maybe a little bit bigger, but like this filbert, and I would load up in whatever color, and in this case, I would probably do them in pink, though I will tell you the other thing I do is I load up in more than one color in my brush at the same time, and I pull it on nice and thick. So I would just go in and pull it, and if I get, you know, colors blending together, that's great. Then what I do is, while it's still wet, is I take my finger and I wipe that bottom edge, so my hands always look like this, 
I always have paint on me. And if I get any on the top, I just run my finger right around there and it comes off. Okay, so there's an edge, there's a top. When this is all the way dry, which this one is not yet, but unfortunately we're going to pretend it is. <laughs> when it's all the way dry, then I use my crackle finish and I use DecoArt One Step Crackle. I love DecoArt One Step Crackle. Um, this is one that goes on after you're done painting. So if I was 100% totally satisfied with these roses, which I'm not because I just realized doing that, we miss a step. We're going to pick up to do some fill-in stuff. This is what I would always tell students I call the foo-foo or the fill-in. I'm going to go ahead and add just some dots here and there where I have a little bit of a gap and I'm not sure what I want to do. Um, I will fill in with these dots if I can get the paint to come out. Um, so you can use either um, you can use a toothpick, you can use, I like a stylus. I have, my stylus has been around forever. One day is broken, so I've got a bigger end, a smaller end, and as you know, they come in all kinds of sizes. So I will take some of my darker, my shading color, in this case, the peony pink, and I will go in and just dot some filler dots. I, again, work in odd numbers, and I tend to use the darker color because that would be like if you had roses in the very back that are just getting to ready to come out or whatever. But I don't want just those. Foo foo, we wanted to do filler dots. So I took my stylus and I used peony pink and some white and actually even some green. And I just stuck in some little dots for filler here and there. Okay, go ahead and paint your edges if you want to paint your edges. We talked about that a little bit. Um, I load up my brush with paint heavy and I go ahead and, and do the edges and then I wipe off here and there as I see it. Um, then I take my one step crackle medium. This is the one step. Um, I use it. I love it. It's a vintage crackle and thicker is bigger crackles, thinner is littler crackles. You can either crackle in just one area like just the roses and right here or the whole thing. I tend to take my crackle and put it on thicker in like the roses and stuff and then a little bit thinner up here. It takes about um, an hour to two hours to dry depending on the weather and depending on the thickness. So once that's all good and dry, and this one actually is probably close to dry now, um, maybe not all the way, but you're going to take a top coat because that's how you're going to see the crackles. This is a vintage look and you won't see them unless you put something on top. Otherwise, all you see is kind of like a shiny something or other. Um, and again, I'm not sure that this is totally dry all the way, so this may or may not work right now. If not, I'll just show you on the other one. Um, I like to use burnt umber. You can use an antiquing medium or gel, but I like to use just plain old paint. And then I'm going to brush it over. Sorry, brush it over the painted design. And you can see I just covered up the whole domino there. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to take a damp paper towel and lightly wipe it back off. Okay, it's going to stick in the areas that have cracks. Let's see if you can see that. I don't think you can see that very well. So I'm going to show you on this one too. Um, see down in the bottom of those the finished rose that's totally totally dry you can see that it, there's some cracking and stuff in there or you can just totally not crackle it that's totally up to you um, I do like the old vintage look so I do crackle what I would do is come back now and do it a little bit heavier in the area of the flowers which I know is where I added more crackle okay and then again take my paper towel and then just wipe it off and it cracks in areas that you don't like you think maybe there's a little bit too much you can go in dampen it and rub it off a little bit more and then leave it in some of the other areas this actually has a really nice old crackle to it I hope you can see that um, when this is all dry now 
for me all dry means probably in 15 20 minutes I would go in and do a varnish on the top for me I love the deco art soft touch varnish it's a very matte finish very soft um, it's a dull finish but for something like this I like that I don't, I don't like the the shine and, and you can see like in the light here there's a little bit of a shine to it that's the crackle because of the glue when it dries it's a little bit shiny like that so um, put that on top and that will soften it back down pin back on the back we talked about before the pin back you could actually glue those on ahead of time um, makes a good handle so then you'll end up with the crackle if you do the edges crackled you'll have crackle on the edges there's some there if you can see it okay um, and that's up to you and then I sign and date them well I don't always date them but sign them on the back and I just use a permanent marker a little ultra fine sharpie and put that on the back there and you got yourself a pin you could actually even do ribbon on the edges if you didn't want to paint but again this was just to help you get a really quick little rose that you can add on lots and lots of different things goes quick and fast and you really don't need a pattern um, have fun with it don't stress just sit down and paint I hope you picked up something in this video um, we're not the high-tech production company, Bill. We're, we're working to get there. But in the meantime, I hope you learned something. Make sure you stop by and visit Under the Lemon Tree Designs, both of our, our web page and our Facebook page. Talk to you later, and thanks for watching.